Over the years that I've been doing ministry at the Brooklyn Tabernacle in New York City, I've learned a lot of lessons. I'm sure you have in your place of ministry. Some are little kind of helpful hints that I've learned that I believe God has taught me. Others are huge, huge principles that I have to go back to over and over again and remember, oh, that's so important to not forget that. And I want to give you a good rule to follow, a really good rule. It, the application for me has become total in everything I do, everything I look at in the church, even though the application, the immediate application in the New Testament is much more specific. I'm talking about something we find in 1 Corinthians 14. I'm reading from the first three verses. Following, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Okay, so the context here is Paul, as you know, in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, is addressing the subject of spiritual gifts, the charismata. And in between is chapter 13, which is preeminent, love. Love is more important than anything. But in the context of 1 Corinthians 14, he's talking about some of the abuses that were occurring in the church in Corinth. And what was happening is that the gifts of the Spirit uh, were getting out of whack. And there was a lot of speaking in tongues then with no interpretation. And he's now going to give a detailed teaching about uh, order in the church. So he's talking here about the superiority of prophecy in the language of the people over just indiscriminate speaking in tongues in the services. And he says this important thing. The person who prophesies, now some think that's inspired teaching, some, think it's a, some feel it's a kind of ecstatic, prophetic utterance in the language of the people. Other feel it's just like preaching. I, I don't want to get into that and debate that with anyone. What I want to just point out here is he said, but the person who prophesies speaks for the people's edification or strengthening along with their comfort and their encouragement in mind. I want to just focus on that. The person who speaks under inspiration from God and is really used by God, they encourage and edify and strengthen the people. They don't just pound the people down. They don't give a lecture that no one understands. They speak in such a way in the language of the people using the word of God, getting to the people's hearts so that the people are edified. That word means built up. It actually comes from a root word, which means like working on a building, building the building up. Now, later on, Paul uses this same word in this chapter, in verse 26. He's describing now what went on in the meetings back then. Very interesting. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you has a hymn, or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation, everything must be done so that the church may be built up, edified, strengthened. He's saying no matter what happens in the service, make sure it edifies and builds up. If it doesn't, you have to ask the question, why am I doing this? Why are we letting this go on? No one's being strengthened. No one's being edified. What a wonderful rule. What a wonderful rule. Well, let me tell you how it came to me because I've taken that rule about services and conducting and leading services because remember, pastors, we're responsible for what goes on in our services, whatever kind they might be, or teaching session, or whatever, or this very series I'm doing called The Calling. Does it edify? Is what I'm talking about going to help you as I talk about helping you? So now we look at it. Praise and worship. We have to step back, leaders, and say, 
What's really happening here? Are the people being edified? Sometimes they're being led and they're worshiping God. Boy, does it strengthen them. They're being led into the presence of God and they're worshiping God. Sometimes I've been places or even noticed it at our church uh, where the praise and worship team is getting a little bit carried away into a concert mode and the people are more or less clapping along or whatever. Uh, mm, this is not strengthening them. This is not edifying them. Why are we doing this? How about how we take an offering? Now, there's a tough one. Is this edifying the people? Is this building them up? Is this increasing their faith, or is it just a mechanical thing? How about our sermons? Is the subject I'm speaking on, does this really help the people where they live? If it doesn't, why am I speaking on it? You know, you and I might have a secret interest on the history of the Philistines, but as great as that might be to you and I, who cares in terms of the folks that are fighting battles every single day? They need strengthening. They come to church to be edified. Does this sermon edify them? Does the subject matter? Or how about this? How long? How long we speak? Does this edify? I was once in a service in Argentina where the speaker spoke for two hours and 20 minutes. I'm sure he thought it was great, but I checked out after about an hour. And so did the people. We just couldn't wait. Like, can we please get out of here? Now, I'm sure he thought he was inspired, but any anointing he had probably stopped after the first 20 minutes. But he continued. Now, there's, there's a thing we need to discern. When God stops inspiring us when we're preaching, shouldn't it be better to cut it out? Just stop it and lead to something else? Because it doesn't edify now. People are bored. They can't take in anymore. You know, you can't take in more than the seat of your pants. There's an old saying. We have to be thinking, does this edify? How we end the service. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye, everyone. Does that edify? In other words, do, should we lead them to pray, to repentance, to worshiping God, to being more thankful? What will edify them? What does God want us to do to build up the precious people he's given us? They're fighting battles, as I mentioned, you and I don't know about. When they leave the church, do they say, wow, I met God today, and I feel stronger, I feel strengthened, edified, or, well, praise God, we had church. Whether it's quiet church or wild and woolly church, we don't want church. We want edification from the Word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, one of the ways that I have found to kind of fine-tune that and pray better about it is talking with the people about what they're going through. Um, so I never have never stopped counseling people because I learn a lot. On our Tuesday night prayer meeting, the doors open at five o'clock and people start gathering, coming in early, and the building is dimly lit and they just wait and pray. And sometimes I tell them, I'm coming down early on Tuesday, I'll be down there at six and I'll be in the front and there's deacons and prayer band people and pastors always in the front of the church. And the people who come in early who want individual prayer, they get on a line and then they're ushered to us so we can talk to them. And I never start praying. I never start praying immediately for the person. Usually I, hello, what's your name? Lillian, fine. Lillian, um, uh, so how long you been coming? Uh, I've been coming for five years. Uh, I've never met you, have I? No. Okay, so Pastor, what I want to pray about, wait, wait, Lillian, where do, where do you live, Lillian? What do you do for a living? Who lives at home there with you? How many kids? I learn a lot. They have a prayer request and we get to that. But boy, do I learn a lot. I learn about learning disabilities. I learn about the challenges of life. I wept with one lady who had been well-trained, but went for further training in the medical field, hospital work. And then she got laid off and couldn't get a job, and now she was in a shelter because in New York, you can just go a couple months without a paycheck. You're in Shelter City now. Boy, did I learn a lot. And I always learn as I talk to the people. And it helps us preach, it helps me preach, I hope, in a more edifying manner so that I'm not talking. In other words, where are the people living? How can I help them if I'm in Never Never Land and they're living down here in the nitty gritty of life? I strongly suggest that uh, to you, pastor, leader, whoever you might be. Let's ask God to keep us focused on what 
really edify. So we can fulfill this verse, which says, let everything be done to edification. When we counsel, when we preach, when we lead, everything we do, let's ask God for the wisdom and discernment we need through the Holy Spirit so that everything will be done to build the precious people of God up in their faith. Amen. Thank you.